Hopefully that will do the trick. Right, okay, let's... Yes, go away. <laughs> right, so... My game is... Uh, let me do this. My game is Swan Song, as you know. Um, which is all about being humanity's last hope in a world where robots and AI have kind of taken over. Um, so let's start with unique selling points. What makes our game great? Uh, we're talking about adventuring through a very whimsical, engaging environment with very wacky, entertaining characters. And that's the sort of thing that we really want to hook people with, is the world that we create being very creative and uh, funny, almost playful, you know. Um, the idea being that that will appeal to our target audience, which we will talk about in more detail a bit later. Um, on that line, we have a, a very unique uh, swan-shaped sort of mech suit as the character that everyone will play as. Um, and that's customizable too. So we want to be able to suit a variety of different player styles so they can choose sort of whether or not they're more combat oriented or they prefer the platforming aspects, that sort of thing. Um, players will be able to collect items and power-ups. There will also be Easter eggs to some other games, maybe um, TV shows, you know, pop culture, that sort of thing. That's really popular with um, young people as well in games. Um, the other thing that's very cool about the environment in Swan Song is um, that it will react and change as you go through the levels as you're playing the main story. And depending on whether or not you do bonus content or not, um, you'll actually change what happens to the people around you, what happens to the places around you, and literally shape the world that you're in um, even more. Um, and on top of that, you know, mechanically it's quite simple. Um, very sort of classic inspired games but we're putting that modern um, twist on it that we hope will get the young younger audience interested as well. Um, so we've got our first uh, sort of set of concept art here initially. This is an upgrades menu um, and this is the HUD in the top right corner there as well. So just very simple health bar, fuel bar and then um, a main part of the game is collecting components to power reactors for cities. Um, so that you need three to finish the reactor. Obviously, in this uh, example, we have two and we're missing one. And you can see that by the different colours there. Um, the main character here and then uh, some of our main enemies here. So this arrow here would be the final boss and this emu here is kind of a mini boss. Um, and because they're kind of whimsical, this is an emo emu, <laughs> which is why he's got a giant black bag under his eye. Um, and all the characters would kind of be, uh, they're going to have sort of pun names, that sort of thing, to just add a bit of playfulness to it. Um, so as I mentioned, our target audience is actually going to be young females. We want to make a game that is designed to appeal to young females, but isn't necessarily all about feminine stereotypical things like makeup, dress up, that sort of thing. Because a lot of a lot of girls these days, um, growing up, you know, aren't necessarily as interested in that, but would also like to consume games. So why not try and make something that um fulfills that for them, you know? Um so mainly between seven and fifteen years and the game would be rated seven plus, we'll be fine with stuff like uh, combat because it's all non-humanoid, it's all very um, cartoonized, stylized, uh, you know, censored. Um, we're also looking at a dystopian sort of storyline, um, which is quite popular with young people and teens these days. A lot of pop culture at the moment is is uh, focusing on that, you know, Star Wars is really popular again, a lot of games at the moment coming out like that, like cyberpunk and all that. Uh, but we did have a look at a couple of similar games, uh, both modern and uh, retro, because we were interested in bringing that retro element. So classic Sonic, classic Mario, um, I'm sure you can see the similarities. 
um, not only in terms of art style but in terms of gameplay. Um, also had a look at, I'm sure you've all played uh, Fireboy and Water Girl. That was very popular growing up for, for teens. Um, so it's really similar in terms of the puzzle elements and the simplicity, but uh, also in its uh, sort of addictiveness, you know? Um, in terms of more modern games, I've had a look at Dead Cells and Inside for these layered, really rich, um, disguised like items and uh, environments, like the way everything blends in. You're not entirely sure that it's interactable or not until you see it and you try it. That sort of thing is what we're looking for as well. And Fez and Portal have similar puzzle elements that we've had a look at. Um, the other thing we had a look at for influence was um, Studio Ghibli for character designs. It's really uh, represents what I was talking about, about whimsy and playfulness, that sort of thing. Um, yeah, that's also quite popular with uh, teenage girls too. Um, so we're looking at a feminine colour palette, but we're also looking at these bold, bright colours. Um, not only is that quite sort of arcade-esque, um, we're also looking at attracting a younger audience by doing that. Uh, Sorry, give me one second. Let my cat out. Go away. So here we have uh, an example, sort of really basic sketch of silhouettes and shapes of the environments. Obviously when this is finalised it will be rendered in full pixel style or that sort of thing, but this sort of just shows you how platforms might be placed and what the layering of the backgrounds would look like as well. Um, we also have uh, an NPC, a human NPC, as I mentioned, like um, they have been sort of suppressed a bit by uh, the robots, but they are around and you can talk to them and unlock um, story cues. Um, also, a couple of example puzzle objects that you could use, such as a button and a lever, that sort of thing. Uh, right, so to talk about storyline quickly, uh, the AI have sort of taken over and the player will start just rebooting and not really being sure what's going on in that the only thing they will know is they have a, a purpose of, of helping liberate humanity from this crisis but uh, sort of the lead up as to how this happened and why is missing from uh, the memory banks of Swan Song. So in order to find these little um, sort of easter egg memory chips you have to defeat the the mini bosses you get uh, a like a a memory chip that will give you the location of the next boss but also something that will reveal a bit of information about how you were made um, or that sort of thing just the past um, then you're going to restore these power to these cities and liberate them and uh, You've got to follow the path all the way to the end, where there's a top secret uh, AI sort of hive mind controlling everything. Um, we've got a 2.5D Metroidvania style platformer. So the idea is that you could explore and go back to places, that sort of thing, if, if you find new items or if you decide you want to do that. We want to give players the choice to either you know, just complete the levels or to really 100% them with their exploration and, and uh, experience, you know. Um, controls are very simple. You tap and hold to the left or the right of the character to get it to move. Um, and you swipe up and down to jump and duck. So you can duck from, like, projectiles. You jump on enemies' heads to break them as well. Um, you also have jetpacks that you can use, like fuel. So you can, like, keep swiping to use a jetpack. And um, that will let you obviously move further, uh, but you do have limited fuel. It's kind of like a stamina bar where it will deplete and then recharge itself over time of rest. Uh, you can also collect uh, components from like regular enemies that are broken um, that you can use to upgrade yourself um, and choose your own playstyle that way. Um, there is a sort of mini quest to repair the mech suit to its full functionality by completing all the upgrades if a player chooses to do that. Uh, 
this is an example of like a map that we might have. It's very similar to sort of the likes you'd see in like Super Mario, for example. And uh, the last thing really is um, we've included a sort of a leaderboard to uh, add that important competitive element. So it's likely going to be um, time based. Um, and uh, you'll see world records and also your own uh, sort of personal uh, stats and then your place where you are in worlds. Um, finally, the technical stuff. Uh, we're looking at making a 16 by 9 aspect ratio display. Um, that's most common for mobile devices and such, so that's what we're aiming for. 24 bit color. Uh, we're looking at DirectX version 11 or later. And I was aiming at uh, Android 7 or iOS 11 or later. This is sort of the standard that we based on um, Samsung Galaxy S7 and iPhone 8. Um, which is sort of a 2016 mobile model, and that's what we would expect to be kind of the lowest that uh, kids are going to have in the market these days. We don't want to exclude people just because they don't have the newest devices, but obviously we do need to make some compromise based on what we can then uh, achieve, you know, with our actual um, development there. Um, we'll be using Photoshop and Unity 2018. 0.4, 0 0.29. I had a look and uh, I think this would be the best uh, version to use because it's got a good mobile optimization, that sort of thing. Um, that's about it. If anyone has any questions, um, I would invite you to ask. But be aware, I can't see the chat, <laughs> so you might have to talk to me. I'm going to take that as we're good. <laughs> right, thanks guys.